Hi, today I will show you how to set up a Cisco router to support VDSL. VDSL is becoming more and more popular and Cisco created a router 887VA that can support ADSL and VDSL. Uh, because it is a pretty new standard for uh, home broadband uh, it is not easy to find a lot of documents and uh, templates. Uh, so, because I had a task, uh, an on-site job to set up a uh, VDSL router for one of the clients, I decided to record this video and show you uh, what steps should be uh, done to uh, make it work. Okay? So, I am based in the UK and I will talk about uh, BT version of VDSL but it should be very similar uh, in your country I will show you what the only difference could be uh, generally speaking if you if you order a VDSL you will receive a modem and uh, uh, an ISP engineer will connect this modem to uh, to a router. Okay, what we want to do, we want to replace both devices with a Cisco 887VA router. So, what we have to do, we have to take out this RJ11 cable and plug it to ADSL slash VDSL port in our 887VA router. There are three main steps to set up VDSL on the 887VA router. First is to uh, create a sub interface for uh, VDSL and tag it with VLAN 101. Okay, so what we have to do, we have to go under the interface E0 and make sure that there is no IP address and no shutdown, but that was uh, on by default as far as I remember. And then we have to create a sub interface uh, with a VLAN number and that is the only difference if you're not in the UK. So you have to go to your ISP and ask them what is the tag now? What is the tag? What is the VLAN number that you want me to use? Okay, in the UK, BT I uh, use VLAN 101. Okay, we enable PPPoE and uh, we create. Uh, we we bind it to uh, dialer one. Okay, let me show it to you on my on the router that I set up, so that is Ethernet 0, there's absolutely nothing, no IP address and no shot, that's it. Then what I did, I created a sub interface, okay? dot one q one one and these two commands to enable PPP OE. Step number one. Step number two we should we should shut down uh, ATM zero and all sub interfaces uh, because we cannot use uh, ADSL and VDSL at the same time because there is one port on this uh, router it's ADSL slash VDSL so we should go under the ATM interface and any sub interfaces because sometimes there is a sub interface for uh, ATM and type shut down ok let me show you on the router that I configured show run ATM view interface Okay, I I decided to leave 
all the commands that I had put before and the only thing that I did I typed shut down okay I decided to leave everything because maybe one day I will go back to ADSL so then I do not have to do anything just type no shut again step number three is to create or sometimes change the dialer interface okay if you if you used ADSL before the only thing that you might have to do is to change the uh, username and password okay because maybe your IST will give you a new username and password in my situation it was exactly the same one uh, but rem please remember that, that some ISPs will not require you to authenticate with ADSL but they will ask you to authenticate with VDSL for instance so it's you have to check it with your ISP. Now, let me show it to you in my router. Show run there one. Okay, I have a few more commands uh, uh, in here because I have a zone based firewall, I have a dynamic DNS but this is a list of commands that you should type uh, a few a few words about some of them MTU here and just MSS okay please remember to put it uh, both commands uh, it will if you don't it can uh, cause some issues because PPP is going to add some uh, a few bytes so please make sure that we that you change the MTU size, okay, uh, your username and password, no CDP, okay, we do not want to uh, run CDP with our ISP, and dialer pool one, pool 1, okay, that is here, okay, it's good to put a uh, description as well, so we know what this interface uh, is doing at the moment okay and that's it if you put if you put these three steps you should be able to get an IP address from your ISP step number four is something that I called finish the configuration because uh, you will not be able to browse the internet, you will not be able to ping anything because a few pieces, pieces are missing. So first of all we need a default route. Okay? So we have to send everything to dialer 1. You can do it that way or you could put one command under the dialer interface itself. I like to do it that way. Then we should create a an interface for our uh, LAN. Okay, so I used VLAN1. I assigned an IP address. Okay, and the last thing, the last thing to remember is NAT. Okay, just from your CCNA studies, we have to create an access list. So uh, I created an extended access list because I'm going to use this router as a VPN router. Uh, and we are permitting our uh, LAN to access anything. Okay, and we create uh, we create a, a NAT statement. IP NAT inside source list NAT, the one that created here. Interface Taylor one overload is really important. Okay, if you follow all these steps, you should be able to uh, ping uh, everything from your router and your PC connected to any port on this on this router, the switch really, uh, should be able to browse the internet. Okay, I put a few more things that would be good to include in this uh, 800 series router. First is zone based firewall. So really turn on uh, stateful, stateful packet inspection. We should enable SSH or Telnet to make sure that we can 
access this uh, router remotely, DHCP server, okay, because in most situations we do not want to uh, assign a static IP address to all of our clients. NTP, banners, security, dynamic DNS is a good thing to enable. I did it on this router, uh, and thanks to that, because as you probably know, we have a dynamic IP address, so it means that this IP address changes, so we will not be able to access this router using an IP address. Dynamic DNS will help us with that. First, it's syslog server, and uh, the list is uh, really long. You can uh, add, for instance, uh, VPNs, uh, security, and so on. Okay, a few uh, show commands now. Okay, that is a command that was put by Cisco to show uh, BDSR. It was a different command for ADSR, so please make sure that you remember that one. It will give you all information about uh, the line, okay, the speed that was negotiated, and if something goes wrong, you are you will be able to uh, see what's going on, okay, so you can see that VDSL2 was negotiated because the DSL mode is auto, so I allowed this router to negotiate uh, the line and the speed, okay, of course show IP interface brief, it will show all interfaces, please remember that a public IP address uh, will be assigned to dialer1, uh, our Ethernet uh, zero interface is up and up, but it will not get an IP address. It was very sim similar with ADSR, but please take a look here. It's shut down. Okay, and our VLAN one, our LAN interface. Thank you very much.